the sanctification of a certain man. Is this a false prophecy or just a dangerous manipulation? We are not political, we are biblical. Welcome, come on in. It's good to be with you again. I see you have your Bible with you and your notepad. It's always good to be prepared. Pull up a chair, get comfortable. Our talk is going to be a little bit different from the usual. I want to start off by repeating, we are not political, we are biblical. And I say that because I am called to be a minister of God's word to you. I am not called to be a political analyst or advisor, nor am I called to be an entertainer or a social media influencer. And I'm a-okay with what I've been called by God to be and to do. A Christian, a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What I want to share with you is about as political as I ever am. It is about as close to a political analysis as you will ever hear from me in public. But it is biblical, and I share it with you because I think that you and all of your friends need to pay close attention to what I am about to say. This message is about the saintification of a certain man. And I ask you to consider if this is a false prophecy or a dangerous manipulation of the body of Christ. We had received an email just a few days ago right after the attempted assassination of President Donald Trump in the United States. I want to respond to it because this comes in right after our teaching on the wheat and the tares found in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 13. This email was forwarded to us and it was titled Blood on the Right Ear. And it references several Old Testament scriptures, and there is an obvious reference to the bullet wound that President Trump received in his right ear. The reason that I want to talk with you about this is that this is not the first type of misapplication of scriptures and the attempt to proclaim a certain man as the savior and only hope for America and the rest of the world that I have seen. In my opinion, this type of false interpretation of the word of God is a type of terror and is poisonous and deadly to the body of Christ. It is not the first of its type that I have seen And the issue that I have with it, and those like it, is not only its poor theology and misapplication of Scripture, but it attempts to take the glory of what the Lord is doing and assign that glory to a certain man. In my opinion, this type of social media post attempts to sanctify a certain man as being anointed and called of God to lead the United States and the world and attempts to draw attention away from the one true God and as a distraction to focus on man instead of the Savior. You may not agree with me, And that's okay. I might be wrong on this, but what if I am correct? Remember that the people of the nation of Israel wanted a king instead of a man of God to lead them. The Lord gave them what they wanted, and they ended up with King Saul, who told them what they wanted to hear and promised to deliver to them everything they wanted. Let's take a look at what was written. 
remember that this was posted on social media right after the attempted assassination of the former United States presidents. I saw this on Telegram. It's kind of cool. In the Bible, the concept of blood on the right ear, Leviticus chapter 8, verses 22 through 24, and chapter 14, verse 28, serves as a visible mark of consecration, signifying that the person is dedicated to God's service and has been set apart for a specific purpose. This act represents a physical and spiritual transformation, preparing the individual for their sacred role. Here's a breakdown of the significance. The right ear. The right ear represents hearing and obedience. In ancient times, the right ear was considered the most important ear as it was the ear that heard the words of God. Blood. Blood represents life, sacrifice, and atonement. In this context, the blood is a symbol of purification and consecration. Consecration. This means to set something or someone apart for a specific purpose making it holy and dedicated to God. In this case, the blood on the right ear signifies that the person is being set apart for a sacred task or role. Priestly Consecration In Leviticus 8, the blood is applied to the right ear of Aaron and his sons, consecrating them as priests. This act sets them apart as mediators between God and the people. Purification. In Leviticus chapter 14, the blood is applied to the right ear of the person being cleansed, symbolizing their purification and restoration to the community. I want to remind you that the tares that Jesus warned us about looks like wheat, at least up until harvest time. Unlike wheat, which is good to eat, tares are poisonous weeds that will kill the person or the animal that eats it. Wheat will appear brown when ripe, whereas darnel, or the tares, is black. The darnel tares will wrap themselves around the root of the wheat and choke it. The bearded darnel mentioned only in Matthew chapter 13 verses 25 to 30 is a species of rye grass, the seeds of which are a strong soporific poison. The word soporific is defined as something that will induce or tending to induce sleep or to make a person drowsy. It is a drug or other substance that induces sleep. It produces a hypnotic effect. The grains of the tear or darnel, if eaten, produce convulsions and even death. The symptoms of ingesting tares or darnel and or its fungus are sleepiness, drowsiness, hypnotic episodes, convulsions, drunkenness, intoxication, trembling, inability to walk, hindered speech, vomiting, stupefaction, and dim-sightedness. Sheep do not know the difference between good wheat and bad tares. Shepherds are responsible to know the difference and to keep the sheep away from the tares. Even a small mixture of tares in with the nutritious wheat is deadly. 
So let's take a look at these scriptures to see what they really say and see what they really apply to. Then let's consider what is missing in that social media text that we're talking about. Before we do, let's put these scriptures into proper context. The Lord had told Moses to call Aaron and his sons to stand and serve God. Moses was the man called by the Lord to lead the people. Moses had been appointed and called by God to lead the nation of Israel. God told Moses to call Aaron and his sons to serve as priests, not politicians, to serve God and the people. Leviticus chapter 8, verses 22, 23, and 24. And he brought the other ram, the ram of consecration. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he killed it. And Moses took the blood of the ram and put it on the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe, his big toe, of his right foot. And he brought Aaron's sons and Moses put the blood on the tip of their right ear and upon the thumbs of their right hands and upon the big toes of of their right feet. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. Leviticus chapter 14, verse 28. And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the big toe of his right foot, upon the place of the blood of the trespass offerings. Now, the explanations in the email that we had received regarding the representations of the right ear, the blood, general consecration, priestly consecration, and purifications are nowhere to be found in the scriptures that this social media text references. And unless you actually read these scriptures for yourself, you would probably assume that these representations, as claimed by the original author of this text, are actually there. But they are not. You should be asking yourself, if they are not there, what else might be missing? Okay, let me point out that the scriptures indicate that the blood that was being placed on the right ear of Aaron and his sons came from a sacrificed animal and was not the blood of Aaron or his sons. It does not say that Aaron's ear was pierced by Moses, nor does it say that it was Aaron's blood that was placed on the tip of his ear. The implication of this social media text is that the blood of President Trump's ear was the same thing. That is false. The blood of a man that was shed at the hands of an assassin is not the same as the blood of a sacrificed animal that was shed at the hands of Moses. The scriptures teach that the blood of that sacrificed animal was placed upon the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. That completed explanation was not shown in the comparison in the social media post. To imply that a certain man was the same as Aaron and his sons is false. 
it is misleading and it should be carefully considered as a tear and not as a wheat. It is important to not take scriptures out of context in order to fit a personal narrative or agenda. Exercising sacerdotal or priestly functions is not the same as dodging an assassin's bullet. Even a basic reading and understanding of the rest of the scriptures that follow what was cited in the social media post would indicate that this process of anointing and appointing Aaron and his sons for service to God and country is not analogous to what happened to the former president. So, am I disagreeing with the politics of the former president? No. Am I saying that the former president was not protected by divine providence? No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that we must be very careful not to believe everything that we see or hear or read simply because it has some scripture reference attached to it. Even though the scriptures cited might be from the Bible and the explanation given might be fairly convincing, remember that tares look like wheat until harvest time and eating tares will have very bad consequences. Our God is a very jealous God, and anyone who tries to steal the glory due his name should be considered as swimming in dangerous waters, and anyone trying to mislead the body of Christ should be avoided. Am I saying that what was cited in the social media post is wrong? Or am I saying that it was being offered as a faulty comparison? Yes and no. If a person was familiar enough with scriptures to even know that this passage was in the Bible, then why would they make that faulty comparison between a certain man and Moses and Aaron? Why did they not include the rest of the scriptures? Why did they not make certain that their readers understood the precepts and concepts of animal sacrifice in Moses' time? I would hope that you would ask, are they trying to support a particular narrative? Are they declaring this man is God's will? Are they really misinformed or are they deliberately trying to feed you some bad wheat? And if they are not trying to get you to support the narrative that a certain man is from God, then why are they using these relatively obscure and not so relevant in today's church and society scriptures. And if they don't directly come out and say that this certain man is God's man for our times, then why are they only quoting a portion of the scriptures and applying them out of context? Could it be that they are aware of most Christians' ignorance of the Bible? Could they be trying to draw Christians into a false sense of security that everything is going to be all right? Are they deliberately trying to make sure that we are asleep in the light? Remember the side effects of eating tares? Sleepiness, drowsiness, hypnotic episodes, convulsions, drunkenness, intoxication, trembling, inability to walk, 
hindered speech, vomiting, stupefaction, dim sightedness. All that I am saying is that this type of social media post is dangerous. There is no one man or woman who can save the world. There is no man or group of men who can stop what God is going to do. We are living in very perilous times, both politically and spiritually. There are a lot of very dark forces at work manipulating what we see, hear, read, and believe. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 23 and 24, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Am I saying that the writer of this social media post is saying that this certain man is the Christ? No, I am not saying that, and neither is the writer, at least not directly. But the inference is that this certain man is the Redeemer and the only one who can do it. This appears to be part of an ongoing campaign to sanctify a certain man as a distraction to the body of Christ and should be considered a poisonous weed, a tear like the one that Jesus talked about in the book of Matthew. Just be very careful and very prayerful when you read these types of messages. Only Jesus Christ is the Redeemer and Savior. Only He can change the hearts of men and women. Yes, God works through men and women to achieve and fulfill His divine plans, but be very careful when those men and women that God chooses to work through take God's glory and assign it to themselves. Be very cautious when these men and women do not refute or refuse the applause and affirmation of their followers. You must consider and ask, why are they not proclaiming God's sovereignty and omnipotence if they're from God? You must ask why they are saying, How great I am! Look at all that I have done! Instead of saying, To God be the glory. Remember what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Don't be asleep in the light. Don't get fooled again. And don't get left behind. You might not agree with me, and that's okay. I might be oversensitive to this matter, but isn't it better to stay away from what might be tares and stay where you know for a fact that the wheat around you is good to eat? Shepherds are responsible to know the difference between wheat and tares and they are responsible to keep the sheep as safe as possible. So until next time, thank you for taking the time to listen. And I pray that the Lord will guide you, protect you, prosper you, and keep you safe as you follow hard after him. God bless you.